Welcome to the first of my planetary geometry series. This is me. That's probably you. Introduction to planetary geometry using timing solution software. The chart we'll be using is a daily chart of the Forex USD currency pair. We're going to get into some really advanced concepts now, but uh, these will be fairly easy to deploy using timing solution. You wouldn't want to do this with I'm not sure any other any other software could do this, but let's take a look. First thing we need to do is set the galactic center, which we'll be using in a lot of the uh, coming videos that uh, emphasize this planetary geometry concept. You would simply click the GC button here and make sure that's appearing in this icon picture here. The next thing we want to do is we need to set a natal chart. You can create natal charts here. I've already done the creation. What I'll be using is the US dollar rebirth chart on August 15th, 1971. The endlessly entertaining United States President Richard Tricky Dicky Nixon took us off the gold standard, turning the US dollar into a piece of paper. But this is not a political commentary. I'm just here to tell you that the US dollar, what it was the day before and the day after were different. It really is a rebirth. And what we have found by testing this with different astro techniques is that this rebirth chart seems to give the best results of all possible natal charts for the dollar. The ones from the 1790s, the first trade of the year USD, the creation of the euro, the all time high of the year USD. This particular chart gives us the best results. So that's actually the beginning, you could say, of the first advanced technique, just the use of this natal chart, as you'll see in a moment. You know, this kind of reminds me of a rather racy jingle we used to um, sing whenever we would go visit Mr. Nixon when he would give uh, his 1972 presidential campaign speeches. We would sing, why change Nixon in the middle of a screw, both Nixon and 72. Sometimes he would smile at us and other times he would just frown, but he got reelected, so I guess it's all good. When most people think of planetary geometry, they think of applying these aspects here. And that's fine, but this is simple. And you know, any financial astrologer can show you multiple examples of when they work. The problem is you can also show more examples where they don't work. So by itself, not that hot. Planetary patterns, on the other hand, these can be really hot and they can be consistently hot if you know what you're doing which is what we're going to try to start doing in this video series. When you click these, uh, click any of these, you can see exactly the pattern that will be defined for you using the planets you select. And that, that truly must suck, getting the finger from God. I'm not sure I want to get into that, but whatever. But um, grand quintile, whoa. And we've got some pure number-based ones, you know, pure benefic here combination of a benefic and a malefic. And um, you got your Fibonacci, you got your quintile. Quintile times two is a Fibonacci number. So we've got some interesting combinations here, as you can see. That's very benefic. Very. This is a hot one. And this is a hot one for turning point aspects or, you know, malefics, this one here. Anyway. We don't want to use the moon. No, no, no. You can practice with it on your own, but I just want to show you the good stuff and the moon is too hyper. So all planets, but not the moon, north node, south node, and the picture here is your galactic center, which we set at the beginning of this presentation. So both of these are defined exactly the same way. Yep, they are. And uh, let me show you, uh, I, I just want to clear the air on something to make sure everybody's on board with what I'm doing. This is something uh, that would be very traditional. Now, not too many astrologers uh, use, financial astrologers use these patterns at all. But of those that do, the two that get used the most are the grand trine and the grand square. So, and they would use it geocentrically, and they would set an orb of 10 or even a little higher. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Calc it. That's what it looks like. As you can see, that's very nice, and all of a sudden, but some of these, that's okay, but some of these are, it's just okay. 
it's just okay. For one thing, you go months and months without anything. But let's change it to Helio. And all of a sudden, we're catching, you know, a lot more, a lot more very interesting looking pivots. And we don't have too much dead space. So it's definitely something, you know, you, you should probably run both, but I can just tell you from experience, having been doing this for a long time, you're going to get better results with Helio. Just like in my prior video on the stepping techniques, you can get better results with Helio, planetary equidistant lines, better results with Helio. There's just no question about it. It's the same thing when you deal with um, this guy. The planetary patterns or planetary geometry, it's really geometry. Now, I, I can go through these, the square and all that, but I don't think that that's so easy for you to do on your own. I'd rather get into the more slightly advanced concepts. So let's change this to, uh, uh, let's lower the orb to 5. It's a 0, 5. And the advanced stuff will come when we start using the nettle chart, but I just want to show you, oh, might as well use the finger. We'll use everything besides the um, numbers numbered ones. We'll do it in Helio. We just dropped our orb. Now when you see this, it's going to look very hyper, so don't, don't form a judgment until I tell you how to use it. And what you can do with this, go to the main panel, and you can go to the line drawing tool, and basically right around here, you can see where a lot of tops are. You would just draw, just draw a horizontal line. <coughs> and you would just be interested in using those timers which are above your horizontal line. You can make it harder. Again, this is something, you ex as you can see, when you do that, you start getting some really sweet looking um, pivots. You know, so look, I mean, that, that's hot. That's good. Shit, it's all good. At any rate, um, so that's two things. Learn to use the Helio more than the Geo. You can set up an index, but now we'll get into um, some of the more advanced concepts, which are accomplished by using the natal chart. Let me clear this so we have a fresh start here. Again, we're using the US rebirth chart. select natal and now we have to drop the orb even further because we want to get really good hits that's a very tight orb when you're using planetary patterns so again we continue to use all of these planets no moon but we use at, at any rate let's go over here clear this i would recommend three sets of planets the first set being your benefics, Venus, Jupiter. The next set, Mars, Saturn. And the final set, the lights. And those are your malefics, Mars, Saturn. And now the lights, sun and moon. These are from your natal chart. So another way of saying it, we're selecting sensitive zodiac points. These are simply fixed zodiac points. They don't change. Your transit up here, the transit, they change every day. These guys fixed. But let's start with the benefics. Venus, Jupiter, transit, three degree orb. And we'll take, now you, of course you can select anything you want, but what I'm recommending is benefic planetary geometry with benefic natal planets. So of course that's your grand trine. And of course it's your 60, 60, 120. That's, that's about as, and, and this of course. So we'll just start with these three, just that all. You know, you can, you could probably add the kite you could probably add the um, about 120, 60, 180, but I'll let you do that on your own. So Helio, add it, calc it. You know, and, and, and the results are pretty freaking hot. That's, it's nailing, I mean, look at that. Look at some of this stuff. Look at some of the things it's nailing. So um,
Definitely, I mean, that's, that's really sweet. You could um, also, well, I'll let you do it. I'm giving you the basic core concept. You, you can uh, now try it with the uh, malefic Mars, Saturn. You could even add, Uranus is a turning point planet. You could add Uranus on your own and see what you like that. For, for financial instruments, financials, Uranus emphasize turning points. So you get rid of these and now you try your square, your rectangle, your T-square. The finger of God can be used in either one of these two. E either one of these two, this one I'll work with. But I'm going to leave it off for now. And this, of course, is a... Um, very similar. We want to uncheck that. Not sure. I'm going to go with this one. Just reviewing what I got here. And um, that's nice. And that's uh, a little bit off. That's perfect. And some of these look really good. It's a whole cluster right at that top. That's interesting. Right right there at the breakup. Now, um, again, you can also do it in Geo. And you get a very, very different look. I mean, G Geo is just a little weird with this stuff. It's just not a little weird, very weird. And you can do it when you do the lights. Let's take a look at the lights. Nothing fancy there. Start with Geo first. Yeah, that's uh, interesting there. That's uh, not that good, but that's perfect right there. Very good. That's right, right at the very bottom. That's off by a week. There's so many pivots here, I'm just going to leave that one alone. Breakout, pivot. So that's that's really freaking hot right there. Change it to Helio, and um, Helio is weird because we're using the moon. But it's from a natal chart. So we'll see. And uh, that's nice. That's That's excellent. That's... It's a, it's a little bit of a break. That'll be hard to trade. That's perfect right there. That's perfect. That's awesome right there. That's just beautiful. Both of these two. That's the bottom. The market. I mean, that's from the beginning to the top and then that big break. So that's really sweet. And you, that's awesome if you, if you can see that. from. That's perfect right there. You see that? So as you can see, um, this is another timer you want to make use of. But again, I'm just giving you the basics. You can certainly uh, improve uh, by ex doing a little bit of experimentation on your own. But I want to tell you that you'll find more re reliable results with the planetary pattern geometry than you will with just aspects. There's certain things you could do with aspects and building in indexes using, for example, the galactic center here and a bunch of planets here and using spheric angle. That's good. That's a good thing. You want to use that also. But this business of an astrologer saying, oh, look, Venus, Saturn is having a trine. Isn't that wh what'll happen? It, when you research it over a number of years, you find out practically anything could happen. The fact that they can show you one or two examples is not indicative of anything. But this stuff here, the planetary geometry, you could use it for years. And in up, upcoming um, videos, we'll see how to emphasize the galactic center even more with the stelliums and the planetary pictures, fan models, and of course, a little bit more emphasis with planetary patterns. It's a fascinating uh, subject. It's, it's basically on the same level as um, using the stepping techniques that we, you know, we saw. That was uh, 
pretty eye-opening, I think, for a lot of people. So good luck with it.